Hello and a very warm welcome to our service for St George's Tufnell Park and for anyone else who's tuning in wherever you are, you are warmly welcome to be with us as we join together in worship. Today is the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter, the season of risen life. And in our reading, our gospel reading later, we'll hear the words of Jesus who says that he has come to bring life in all its abundance. Well, you might not be feeling quite like that. I've spoken to lots of people this week who have found that they have really hit a wall this week with lockdown. That they have felt emotions rising up in them of sadness or of anger and frustration and actually have found that this week has been a particularly tough one. And if that's you, then you're, you're not alone. But the abundance uh, that Jesus refers to is not just a, an abundance of material things around us. It's an abundance that is found in God and that is unchanging. God is bigger than we can imagine and we can inhabit him, a life in him that is full and rich and deep. And that's what we're invited to reflect on this morning as we gather together in our homes. I wonder if it's worth at the beginning of our service to think about some things to be thankful for. I know that many of us will have had difficult weeks, I've had some tough times this week too, but I'm also hugely thankful for some small mercies and big mercies too. Uh, this week I'm very thankful for the rain that fell, um, uh, that was much needed, and the subsequent rainbows that we saw over London, uh, particularly on, on Thursday night, just before we went out to clap for our carers, uh, rainbows appeared across the capital. I'm thankful for one of my good friends who uh, discovered that she is uh, cancer-free, having had breast cancer over the past year, and uh, gone through chemo and surgery, and had that good news that she called me with on Friday. We received a very big, uh, generous cheque in the post uh, for church this week that was totally unexpected and as we face some uh, real financial challenges at the moment, uh, that was a hugely a wonderful blessing to have received. And of course, this week we celebrated something very magnificent, which was uh, Olive's 105th birthday. Um, what a life lived of faithfulness and service and so we give thanks to God for Olive and her 105th birthday. It might be that you have some things you just want to give thanks to God for now in your heart and as we come to our opening hymn we are going to sing some words which might ring true for you. I hope they all ring true for you but um, what st stands out for me is the words I am weak but you are mighty hold me with your powerful hand. We might feel small and weak as we continue under these challenging circumstances, but God is mighty and holds us and does fill us with those good blessings. So let's join together and uh, join together in worship now. Hell's destruction, land me 
safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever sing to thee. I will ever give to Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia, alleluia. Let's join together in the words of our prayer for today. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's continue in worship with our action song. of the Apostles chapter 2 starting at verse 42. They devoted themselves to the Apostles teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the Apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Very truly, I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate that climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by his name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them 
and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly, I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I come that they may have life and have it abundantly. Hi. I like to start today by quoting from one of the Narnia stories by C.S. Lewis. This is from The Last Battle, and a group of pilgrims have been led to this place, this country. They don't know quite where they are. It feels strange, different and new. But it also feels familiar. It takes them a while to realise that this was Narnia, Narnia as it should have been, where every rock, every flower, every blade of grass looked as if it meant more. I have come home at last, says the unicorn. This is my real country. I belong here. This is a land that I have been looking for all my life, though I never knew it till now. Come further up. Come further in. This is perhaps a picture of a time when the kingdom of heaven comes in full. Maybe an allegory of the book of Revelation where we see God's holy city, the hope and the glory. Today I'm going to be riffing off both of our readings to explore the idea of the kingdom of heaven that is mysteriously both now and not yet, both present and far off, to think about how Jesus calls us to live in the reality of God's kingdom here and now, with the same invitation, come further up, come further in. I think this is the abundance that Jesus speaks about in John's Gospel. Abundance in and through Jesus, who is both the Good Shepherd and the gate towards new pasture. And we have a glimpse of this abundant life in action as we look to the church in Acts. A life to which we are called. Come further up, come further in, home at last. Our Gospel reading today brings us an agricultural scene of shepherding well known to Jesus' audience in first century Palestine. This is a hard job and a crucial job for both society and for religion. And being a shepherd, especially being a good shepherd, involves protecting the flock as well as leading them. It involves making hard and brave decisions and sometimes being firm. And I found myself thinking what this whole experience was like for the sheep the sheep trust their shepherd completely, but for the sheep, the reality of being shepherded, shepherded it involves a lot of being told where to go, where to stand, where to stay and where to eat. There are limits and restrictions. And I can't help but feel like we are being shepherded at the moment, restricted and limited by this virus being told where to be, where to go, where to stay and where to stand. And I'm not advocating that we break any rules. Friends, please do stay at home. But I think it's healthy to acknowledge how we feel about this. As our emotions might be evolving, as fear and anxiety are overshadowed by anger and irritation. And we will all have different levels of trust and satisfaction in how these things are being handled. And Jesus doesn't offer us an alternative way of handling this pandemic, but he does offer us a new way of being. Jesus reveals himself as the good shepherd who leads his sheep to new pastures and to abundant life. When Jesus uses the word good, our translation is a bit of an understatement because the word he uses also means and implies noble, wonderful, precious and beautiful. This is the one who calls us to life and to have this life abundantly. Jesus also explains that he is the gate. 
It is through Jesus that the life of abundance is found. To hear and know the voice of Jesus, to trust in him, to be called by name, to follow him to good pasture, to have life abundantly. And if we're honest, this lockdown does not feel like life in abundance. So how do we conceptualise life in all its fullness, abundant and lavish, now in our isolation and fear and lockdown? I think that in Acts we are given a glimpse of what it looks like. In this beautiful, perhaps idealised picture of the first fresh and emerging church, we hear that they shared everything. Houses and riches were donated. There was no status of rich and poor. There was no insider or outsider in this church. Maybe it feels utopian or unreal. But there is more. We are called further up and further in. The nature of this church goes beyond and behind the sharing of possessions. They had all things in common. They met daily to break bread together, to share meals together. They were in fellowship, worshipping and praying together. They had all things in common, all things in fellowship. A new kind of giving is born, one that binds people together beyond possessions and treasures. The followers give themselves to one another. Fellowship is the key here. The possessions will follow. What is at stake here was not the giving up of riches, but the giving up of each individual, the giving up of the self, one by one, as the Spirit gave direction and as the ministry of Jesus demanded. Giving up for the purpose of announcing the reign of the Father's love through the Son in the bonds of communion together with the Holy Spirit. This might sound strange as we are not currently able to meet physically with one another to share in meals and worship. The way we give gifts to the church and to one another has temporarily changed. But we are still able to give ourselves to one another in prayer, in hope and in trust. Yes, life will be so much more abundant outside of this lockdown, but even within it, we can still follow the Good Shepherd to new pastures. In our weekly Bible study, we've been thinking about a rule of life for lockdown, about what practices we can take up and maintain as we follow Jesus through this time. And I encourage you to think about this for yourselves this week. Who is Jesus leading you to pray for, to contact, to call, to forgive? How is Jesus asking you to use your time, your money, your resources? Perhaps there are new pastures, new practices, new ways of being. We are connected in and through the Spirit of God. The same Spirit that hovered over the water at creation, the same spirit that produced tongues of fire at Pentecost. It is the same spirit that enlivens our prayers, inspires our faith, sustains our hope and confirms our trust in Jesus Christ. It is the same spirit that enlivens our prayers, inspires our faith, sustains our hope and confirms our trust in Jesus Christ. Jesus beckons to life abundant in the future, but also in the present moment, also in this lockdown. If we but follow where he leads and hear the invitation, come further up, come further in. Amen. Let us pray together.
Lord, we're grateful we can come together online this morning and we thank you for the gift of each other. As we live through these strange times, we thank you for the small things that bring joy. A flower, a bird song, the smile of a neighbour. Help us to find ways to demonstrate your love to those we are in contact with. We thank you for all those undertaking essential work in a whole range of jobs and ask that you'll give wisdom to all in authority, that they will make decisions which serve the common good and which protect the needs of everyone in our community. We also pray for those who can't work at the moment and are worried about their future. We bring before you all who are suffering in body, mind or spirit. May they know your healing love. We also bring to you all those who are grieving. There is so much sadness and loss at the moment and we ask for your comfort for those who mourn. We ask that you will be with us in the coming week. Help us to remember that you are our rock and our foundation, no matter what we are going through. You are the same God whose nature is always to have mercy and we know that you will be alongside us every day. Accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And now say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. Pray that I may have the grace to let you be my servant too. We are pilgrims on a journey. Please receive this blessing as you head into a brand new week. Christ, the Good Shepherd, who lay down his life for the sheep, draw you and all who hear his voice 
to be one flock into one fold. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forevermore. Amen. We are raised to new life with Christ. Go in his peace. Alleluia, alleluia.